I have three cars here that have something in common, and you know by the title what that is. It's called SLS, or self-leveling suspension. All three of these cars, these two belong to me, this belongs to a friend of mine. I also own a 2000 E320 wagon which has SLS. So there's four cars that I'm dealing with. Now I'm not saying I'm having problems with all four of these cars at this point, but a couple of them are gonna need service. One of them is going to need a flush and an inspection. And the wagon here that belongs to my friend is gonna need some work because he's got a sagging rear end and a bouncing rear suspension. Now I know some of you have been around these Mercedes, have heard about this SLS or you've owned one of these. Um, you know, there's a lot of misinformation floating around there on the internet. The number one thing is that these systems are very complicated. They're not. Uh, I know some people may argue with me, but they don't have computers. They're all mechanical. There's only four or five key components, and each component is predictable in its wear patterns and what can cause certain symptoms on an SLS system that's not functioning properly. What I've learned over the years is a lot of the problems that people have with these cars is due to neglect. Number one, a lack of a regular fluid flush of the hydraulic system can lead to premature wear of the components. But even more than that, I found that a lot of people will start having symptoms and they'll just keep driving the car. In other words, one component will start to fail. And if you continue to drive the car, it puts excessive stress on the springs and on the hydraulic struts. Remember, each one of these cars does not have a rear shock absorber. It has a rear strut or a rear hydraulic jack. So it's different than a shock absorber, quite a bit different. And as we go through this series, I think I'll begin to explain what these differences are. We'll go through some of the theory of operation. We'll go through troubleshooting and how you can fix your own SLS system. Now I'm gonna have three or four of these videos up on YouTube and they'll cover this subject in general with some views of what those components are and some basic things you need to check. But the real in-depth videos I'm going to do, it could be up to maybe 10 videos that I'm going to do that will be on my website as on-demand videos. And these will go into depth, things like how to rebuild a self-leveling valve and adjust it properly, how to rebuild the front hydraulic pump on the engine. How can you tell whether it's the struts are bad or whether it's the accumulators that are failing? How do you adjust the leveling valve once you get everything repaired? And what do you do about a sagging rear suspension? Okay, so this is going to be an ongoing video series on this subject. Once again, SLS stands for self-leveling suspension. That means when you put weight in the back of the car, the car will rise up and stay level. Now this is really handy, by the way, on a wagon because you could put three or 400 pounds back there and actually get the wagon to, to rise right up to level height when you're driving it. Makes it a lot more safe, a lot more comfortable to drive. Same with these cars here. Uh, in review, this is an 82 300 TD wagon, a W123 series. Uh, this is a W126. This is my 560 SEC, a pristine example of a very popular car. These are becoming highly collectible. And then over there is my 1995 S600. That's a W140 chassis. And later on, I'm gonna show you the W210 wagon. I love the Formatic wagon with the self-leveling rear suspension. How can you tell if one of these older Mercedes has SLS? If you're not familiar with the different models, the easiest way is to open the hood and look for the hydraulic reservoir tank. You'll see a tank usually located either on the right or the left side of the forward part of the engine compartment that houses hydraulic fluid. There's a dipstick to check your fluid. It says right on here, hydraulic fluid. And that's a sure indication that this car has SLS. Now you're looking at the engine compartment of that W123 300 TD wagon. And this is where most of those hydraulic reservoirs are located, right here just behind the right front headlight. When you open the hood on the 560 SEC, you can quickly spot the hydraulic reservoir tank over here on the left side. Here's the dipstick here. You know, the tank design is a little bit different, but the system is almost identical in terms of how it operates. 
between the W123 and the W126 chassis. In the engine compartment here on this S600, it's a little bit more difficult to tell. Remember, this is a W140 chassis. I think the engineers on the W140 chassis went to great extremes to kind of hide everything, kind of cover everything up with plastic covers. So you kind of have to hunt for the reservoir on these. But in this car, it's located right behind this little door. You can see the top of it looks very similar to the one in the 560 SCC. And here's the dipstick right here. So you know right away that this car has SLS. And so where do we begin with this series? In part two, I want to talk about what's wrong with the wagon. Uh, he brought it in here and the rear end sagging. Now the rear end is not sagging right now because I made an adjustment on the leveling valve. And I should say right off the bat, if you have one of these SLS cars that has a sagging rear end, you do not fix it by adjusting the leveling valve. You have to fix that either by changing the springs or changing the rubber spacers or changing the rear end subframe mounts because the car needs to be level with no load in it and no pressure into the struts other than residual fluid. So, you know, if you've got a sagging rear end, uh, you don't just get in the car and adjust it to get it up to level. I'll explain later in the ongoing video series on this subject why, but here you can see the wagon is sitting fairly level. I did that because I wanted to test the function of the leveling valve. And then of course I had to go back to my friend and say, hey, how far do you want to go on this car? Do you want to put new springs in it? Do you want to put new subframe mounts on it? So I don't know how much we're going to end up doing on this, but we will be filming through this series. We're going to film the overhaul of the hydraulic pump. We're going to film the overhaul and adjustment of the SLS valve. We're going to film the accumulator replacement and how you can tell whether or not your accumulator is bad. And then hopefully we'll be able to film changing the rear struts on one of these cars. I'm not sure which one yet. And once again, the really in-depth step-by-step videos will be available on my website. They'll either be coupled with a kit with some parts or tools that will help you do this yourself. But the number one goal here is to show you, the viewer, that the SLS is not as complicated as a lot of people say, and it's not as expensive to fix as you may have heard, particularly if you maintain it properly.